Hi everyone, this is an intro video. If you're a packaging reseller and looking for a new packaging style, a new kind of um, something innovative and different that you can offer to your clients or find new clients and get away from the, um, the commodity pricing, the commodity pricing trap, take a look at spouted pouches. Now this is an intro video. I have a customer that wanted me to do a deep dive on or in, in regards to spouted pouches. They package honey. They wanted to get away from glass jars and plastic PET bottles. And I figured the best way to really help other people was to put together a video that I could share. So this is an intro video, then it's going to break away to a whiteboard, which I recorded on Zoom. And why I do it this way is so I can show bigger pictures, I can notate on the screen much bigger than the go to meeting or even the zoom capability. I'm on a much bigger whiteboard so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And I think you'll find it helpful. I hope you do. And let me know if we can help in any other way. Thanks. You would started to ask those questions about filling and asking about, well, talking about printing maybe and talking about sizing. There's just the cut and it's so much easier to kind of do this um, with my little whiteboard toy that I have, just to kind of go over a few different things. And it, it actually really works for the simple fact that a lot of people, you guys aren't alone, a lot of people have asked, well, how do I fill them? And how do I seal them? And and what can I do color-wise? And you know, what kind of quantity do I need? I figured if nothing else, I'd just record it for you guys so you have it for your future reference. Fair? Cool, yeah, sounds good. Um, so I can start. I wanted uh, Kaden to bring up this is one of the ones that you sent us. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I remember. We filled it up. It's supposed to hold, you know, uh, honey weighs one and a half times the amount of water. Water, right? So when we filled this up, it's filled up to about. I mean, and it's not to about there, right? You can kind of see it, but so yeah. about two thirds full. Yep, yeah. like two thirds. Um, so that's this was about what we wanted was this about like 3.7 it was like it was we wanted like four ounces but yeah i said like between three and a half and four ounces of honey which would make the okay. good ounce in it you know um two and a half three to you know two and a half to three ounces somewhere in there would be the liquid okay the, um this is a little wide. I don't, do you have a, your ruler up here or something? Bro, I know for me, this is a little wide. So we talked about, you know, yeah. making it smaller. Um, can't remember. So yeah, so this is about four inches wide. Um, probably at least an inch, wouldn't you say? Like at least three inches wide is something we're looking at. And then it would be. We're thinking kind of more of like the squeeze pack that Maddie gets. Yeah, so he has one of those kind of down here. Yeah. 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 And then um, this was, I didn't know what you thought. If you like the. Um, I'm okay. The corner with... spout or the center spout? Well, yeah. what's, what costs more? Oh, it's it, neither, neither. It's nominal. Okay. This is about this. When you get to this point, Sarah, it's, it's all about what do you want? Um, if you're going to custom print, I mean, we stock these as, as I sent you samples, Tyler, a while ago. Just okay. plain, you know, you could slap a label on them and 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 fine. But when you get into the custom printed world, it's all custom. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the price in one way or the other. Okay. So next question: um, If you put the label, if you put the spout here, does that change filling versus having it here where you can open it at the top? Well, that's that's kind of where we're going with this too. Was we want to make sure that we dial in the size that you guys are are looking for, or at least estimating. But when you deal with a, for example, when you deal with these the corner spout, you have an option here. Let me see if I can get rid of this. You have an option to fill right here at the top, yeah. which is what we call a void. Or you can actually have them come in where you've got the caps off and you can fill through the caps. I lean Obviously, when you fill through the void, you have to seal them. Yeah. I lean towards the corner because it gives us that option. Oh, what about you? Too? It's, it's, it, it doesn't matter one way or the other. It's just the question being when we go into production, 
will need to know one or the other. It's not both per se, because you'll because you will want this. Your customers will want to know that it's not been tampered with, or or that you filled it and then you sealed it. So is is there um, a way you recommend that you seal them? That was one of my questions. Did we do the void? Feel through the void and then leave the cap already on. Um, that would be one of my questions because, again, this is all new to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I, f- I figured I'd do this because it's good for everybody. So there's, you know, this the question's going to come down to how far down this rabbit hole do you want to go? Meaning, um, is this something that, is this something, sorry, I never fail, so I forgot the, um, never fails, never fails. Um, is this something you guys are committed to as far as like you're changing the way you, you so to speak, do business going forward? The reason why I ask is there's different levels, you know, and I, this is what I'm going to show you here, heat sealers. The reason why I ask is it's it, it, it'll make a difference. Um, you know, you can heat seal and you can use a heat sealer, you know, do one at a, you know, one at a time. Hang on, I'll show you. Let me minimize this other picture. Can you see this? Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I'm going to increase this. And I'm going to eliminate. So this is a traditional heat sealer. These are these are 500 bucks, uh, Tyler. They're not expensive. But it's a foot sealer that allows you to kind of, you know, angle and put your, and there's different sizes. This is just the concept I want you to see. This is something that you can heat seal if you have, depending on if you've got a, you know, if you've got a corner spout, you can hit it, you know, right here and seal it. Or you can go the other direction. Hang on one second here. And as you get started, which a lot of customers do, they get started with a um, with a hand heat sealer. Let me see if I can find one here. Now it's basically it's basically like a, a clamp. You know, you you seal it by hand. It's a much slower. Um, it's a slower. Yeah, this is. A, I don't think I have a sample. We we'd probably go the same. I don't. I think we would go the same automatic one, like the one you showed. Most of our process right now is semi-automatic, so it's not fully automatic. It's just done yeah. with the machine. The pedal. You hit the pedal. You put it in. You put it the pedal. It's sealed. Like that would be where I would go. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would. I would too. It's a. It's a step. Of, I mean, a handheld sealer is really and truly, you know, f- for a sample or one. But I guarantee you, you know, you'll you'll. you'll yeah. It's uh, not five thousand. Five thousand. I would have a harder time. Five hundred. It yeah. seems like it would pay for itself in time saved for our employee. Right, and we're just not. Oh, one hundred percent. Is it going to be like then the other piece of it is like, I know we, we have to figure out spout size. So those are the two things. Cause I didn't know that there was the void. When I started this process, I was like, Oh, like, I don't know about doing a void. And my concern is, and this is honey is sticky, right? So when we fill through the void, it's not, I'm sure it's going to get where we're going to seal. Um, and so I would assume with a heat sealer that shouldn't affect it or will it, or will it affect it? My question is if there's no, no, no. So, so the key thing here is, especially when you get to filling, if you want to go down the road of a void, this is not something that, you know, again, if you're going to do this, you're basically going to stick a pipe or a bung or something through that void and fill it in through here. And, you know, then take, then take the pipe out and seal it versus if you're filling it here, It'll be a real mess regardless of what you're doing. But it's meant it but a void is meant to have a pipe or something inserted in there to fill it in there. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. So I don't And then at that particular point, even if you have residue or whatever it is, the heat seal's gonna heat seal through that. You're not gonna have an issue with that. Okay. Um all right, that kind of answers my questions on the filling part, and that's just stuff we would have to figure out. Um, and then obviously size of spout dependent on... I feel like that's going to be faster than filling here and having to put the lid on. Uh, I would agree. Also, because when you're filling through the spout, because depending on how big the spout is, yeah. the more airflow, the faster the fill of the 
pouch is going to be, yeah. be my guess. But I don't, I think that's just too long. Cool. Moving on to the next so like patient. This spout right here to me is <laughs> not Vulcan. <laughs> You can, I'll send you a catalog or, or I will even send you samples or, yeah, if, I mean, you can have whatever, I mean, there's stock sizes. These are stock. You're not going to, you know, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, 15 millimeter. Okay. Just, yeah, just letting you know, just showing you that we know this one. Oh, yeah. This one's just bigger. So, like, it would be somewhere in between. Yeah. And so, if you send sizes, I can figure that out. So, at this point, I'm leaning towards the void film with the sealer. Because that makes sense to yes, us. Ma'am. Shrinking this yep. down. I was um, shrink it down to at least probably three by three yeah. minimum because this was like a four by. Because this one does open up. Well, that's so we yeah we haven't we haven't gotten there. I got the three inch and then we moved on. So we're yeah, kind of so like top to bottom. Minimum three inch wide, um, yeah. maybe even less depending. Well, because you don't think less than three. Because look, you can either squish it completely. Like this thing could open up further Tyler, down below. So yeah, much room there is correct. Open up. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's a. In fact, if if you want, you can you can take that cap off and just blow it up a little bit, so you can see how that bottom gusset's going to hold. Because you're going to, if you haven't done that yet, I'd recommend you do that just to get a better sense of how the the honey's going to flow in there, because it's meant. It's meant to basically expand on the bottom, as Sarah was saying, and give you extra space sort of to fill. It's not a flat bag. There's honey in there. There's, there's honey in here, and, this, and it has it. Oh, good. Okay, okay. great. Nope. I apologize. Yep. Um, so that was... So, so, so the question being is, if it's three inches wide, how tall do you want that? Um, okay, so question on this. Because this one you sent is six... Six it was inches. A four by six. This is four by six. So when you're filling these by um do you fill them one hundred percent full? Or are you going like seventy percent full to the top? Um, is there what it best for best use, right? Like so um that yeah. would well you don't especially through the void guys, you want to give yourself you want to give yourself room in order to seal it at the top safely. You don't want it to be so close up here that this gets all jumbled. Exactly. So you, you want to, whatever you're going to fill in here, you're going to want to get to the point where, you know, you've got some room. Um, I'm just making this up, but I mean, you know, most customers want to give yourself at least an inch in there so you can seal it comfortably without having to worry about, you know, creating an issue. Yeah. Uh, so four and a half? Yeah. I would say probably like four and a half because it's with honey in it right now, the honey goes to about three inches of this one, though with how they have four. Well, and you could squish it. I mean, so you gotta think look at how much it sucks up inside here. Okay. Okay. That's the really yeah. up. Probably four, four and a half. I'm like, oh, what do you think? Well, I don't know if you can see how far. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's way, it's way sucked up in there already. So, um, is that is that good or bad, Sarah? Does it matter? Um, I don't know. My goal is that it doesn't topple over on um, the customer shell on the customer's counter. You know, like I don't know if it's if it's too because it's not you know expanding out. It's just yeah. yeah. And well, it, yeah. Them, when they get that, are they going to look at that and think, "Oh, I'm getting shorted a lot of product"? Because I don't know if anybody looked at the bottom. Well, bottom of something I don't think. Yes, but I'm a Virgo. Well, yeah, you'll, you're going to have to really kind of cross that bridge. Now, we can make that bottom gusset. We can change the bottom gusset size. We can actually, you know, so you're not stuck with that either. It's so I can take that bottom gusset size and make it, make it, you know, more narrow. But, but whatever, you, whatever you change is going to need to be adjusted in some way, shape, or form on the... Right. Well, and then it comes to price. Yeah, okay. Don't worry about price. Okay, okay, okay. The goal is to see what well, it, and 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 again, but I but regardless, I want to make sure that you guys are comfortable and can explain it to your customer, which basically is part of the reason why you know this is part of what you do on your what we call well, the available real weight. estate. It's weight. It's so it really yes. They're getting whatever ounces, and whether what it looks like inside it is is um yeah. 
there's some jars we don't fill all the way to. And we yeah. We haven't gone to about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I think, I, I, I'm not worried about that now that I think about it. Yeah. I think I'm looking at, I'm okay. looking at three, inches, three inches wide, by about four to four and a half inches high. Um, void fill. Void fill. Corner, think, corner, corner spout. Spout. Um, with the, and then the things I talked about with you, we want, um, we, our thought process on labeling um, or printing was, and do you have a jar up here, Ma? So we have, our jars have cutouts in them, die cuts. I don't, you can use them. Um, and so were you wanting the die cut in there or were you just wanting it labeled? So this is our, like one of our labels. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah. So yeah. that's Mark. Um, so a couple thought processes as I'm showing, I'm seeing what you're doing there. Um, either doing like the mark in the middle and then like the top, like it is on this blue one here or doing the label with just the honey in the middle. But I, I like to be able to see the product. Well, so let's, let's not, you guys, that's part of your artwork. You know, we don't design artwork, what we will do. And that's why I wanted to make sure that we talk this out. Gotcha. So what we'll do is once we dial in this size, hypothetically, okay. Gotcha. If we can, and, and what I, what I think we should try to do is if I can find more of those Everly's, the first things first, it's really hard, especially when you're dealing with honey and, and, and liquids, to make a hand sample without it leaking. But what I'm getting at is the next step, in my opinion, is to somehow come up with a three by four and a half with the same bottom gusset as that ever Everly bag. Whether we hand make it, whether we, we take that and cut it and seal it, because we want to... The next step is for you guys to feel warm and fuzzy that the correct size is the correct size. Now, from there, what we'll do is we'll give you a template and then you guys can work and we can recommend artists if you want, or I guarantee you, you've got people and we will give you an artist, I mean, a template and, and, and guidelines for artwork and you can design whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. So, Okay. Awesome. And so they all come clear, correct? So it's what they're doing is they're coming clear like these. No, all... no, 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 not at all. No. Again, if you look at, yeah, you guys now remember you're comparing this to a stock bag. When you talk about things like the Chobani, I mean, this is actually a, a this is actually an opaque or a metalized material because they feel very, very hot. And a lot of times they need that barrier property to make sure that it doesn't, you know, blow through the plastic. So no, you can have, but I believe, Tyler, what you mentioned was Sarah wants a window or you guys want a window. Yes. So, yes. So when you have a window, it, it will be clear. Gotcha. Yeah. That, what I was getting at is some of the thought process on that. And the reason I was getting into the, uh, <laughs> See, you guys, I'm not the only one. No. That was my son, and he was just up here. He knew I was on a call. So, um, if you call, <laughs> it was time that's all right. Day. Welcome to my world. So, my my reason for asking that is yes, the the artwork is on us, but what we're wanting, yes, is a window. And then the thought process was it could also, are you married to clear? No, 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 not at all. Uh, the only yeah. thing I want is people to be able to see the honey. And then uh, we can continue the conversation about between Tyler and I about what that looks like. Well, if you want to see the honey, it's going to have to start out as clear. Yeah. That's the only other way. Now, there were some other things in the past where we could actually take a metalized bag and what they call demetalize it with a magnet. But it's it's a it's a hard process and expensive well, we and we it's not environmentally friendly. Clean. So we don't have that problem um, because we don't heat our honey over 110 degrees. No, no, no. That was all I was saying was if you want a clear window, Sarah, if the material is going to start out being clear. Now, that doesn't mean the whole thing. What we do is we underprint everywhere else on this bag except the clear area. So... It's not translucent. It's it's very it's opaque where you want it. 
and it's clear where you where you want to be able to see the product. Question on material. Right, we're kind of talking about material now. Um, this goes into it. Sustainability is super important to our business being fourth generation beekeepers. Um, I, I mean, I've done some research. I know we're not going to be able to afford the top of the line, like recyclable material. My goal is the one I want it that's, to. Be- that's not, Kyla, that's not true. Really? Okay. Of course not. So, See, what? that's that's why I liked it. I want to be able to I want to be able to kind of help you guys help me in the fact that, you know, part of what I try to do is change the narrative that you guys can't get what you want or you can't you can't have packaging as good as the big boys. And that's not true. Now, this also means that you don't have to order 9 million either. This is so I want to take this along the way where I can not only help you guys get what you want, but also be a raving fan to tell other people that there's a whole world out here that people don't understand. And that's why, you know, that's why I love doing these little white things, these whiteboards, because ultimately I'm all for the environment. This in and of itself is recyclable, but it's not 100% recyclable. Right. Recent advancements in this space, we are now able to use a 100% recyclable material for a spouted pouch. If we're doing it now for soup, we're doing it for hot soup, it doesn't matter whether it's hot or cold. What I'm getting at is if that's what you want, Let's go down that pathway to, to 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 basically get you what you need. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, and I'm a, I actually have a recent example of why it's important to us. We have one one product that is packed in plastic. One. It's little three ounce jars. They're packed in uh, PET plastic, so they fit on airplanes. They're you know, it's just we decided to do one that way, and we just got an email about a lady that was is liking- returning it to the store. Because it's not glass, <laughs> you know. Um, our brand is. Wait, wait, wait. What? What? She? What? She's returning it because she. It's not glass. She's not actually going to return. She said she would. Okay. So here's our. Um, a dis- this is our discovery flight. This is our short discovery. Yep. Um, special reserve short um, flight, right? Um, sure. So she bought. We have a large one. She bought this at the store and she thought the little jars on the inside were glass. And she got home and wasn't happy that it was PET plastic and that this outside was plastic. Now they're recyclable. You can go and take them and recycle. They are. Here's the thing. It just speaks to the consumers that pay for our product. So our goal is to be able to... Allay their concerns that what we're doing is as sustainable as possible. Like, I'm not going to change it. We do this on purpose um, because these little jars are three ounces of honey. They go on an airplane. They're recyclable. The outside part isn't, and someday we may change that. But it really... Oh, can, let me... Can I... Faith. Can I jump in real quick? And, it, and again, this is this is why I like these conversations, but I also want to know how far down that rabbit hole you want to go as well. Let me explain. What people don't understand, including this lady, first of all, I sell all packaging. Now, I do a lot in flexible, but but I'm also all for um, the environment. If she had any idea the amount of energy, cost it takes for a glass jar, And what it takes in order to make, create, for example, in the state of Ohio right here, I deal with a lot of companies in the spaghetti sauce business, broth business, right? And they are so, they are so convinced that glass is better for the environment. However, if you look at the entire life cycle of that jar, okay? You've got to create it. You've got to ship it. Doesn't ship flat. You've got to store it. Then you fill it. Then 
In Midwest, where I'm at, do you know we do not have any glass recyclers? We have to ship it to the Washington state. So if you add all of that together compared to a recyclable, even, even what you currently have is a sustainable option. Because what you did was you eliminated the material to a less material. That is a sustainable example. You are doing, and again, this is why I share this with you, because when you get to designing your artwork and your graphics, those are the kind of things that you can embed into a QR code. Those are the kind of things that you can explain on your artwork, because there's a lot of misinformation out there. This isn't me trying to sell you one way or the other. This is about trying to explain your position of why you are packaging what you are packaging. And, and when and you do that, that's one of the things a lot of people are not doing. It's a tremendous opportunity. Yeah, and that's one of the things that's important and why with the sweet fake is honestly something I was thinking about doing. The reason we did it, there's on the product side, the reason I don't like using like normal plastic is yeah, honey is hydroscopic. So what it does is it pulls moisture in from its surroundings. So when you're putting it, like I'm sure you've seen honey straws, uh, when you put it in that type of plastic, what it's going to do is leach into the honey and change the flavor of the product. And so that is something that's important and why I only use the PET hard plastic, you know, or glass at this point, or glass, so it doesn't change our flavor flavor profile because it's important. So that's something else. This was the next conversation about the material is we need it to be something that doesn't alter the flavor of the honey. And that may be... Well, I think you'll... Yeah, that might be trial and error. And it might not do it at all. I just know there is some plastic jars that leach into the honey and change the flavor. I hope you like this content. If you want more of it, I put together a specialized packaging alliance, a group of packaging professionals that are in different facets of this industry. We have webinars, we have meetings. The idea is to share information about this great industry of packaging, whether that be um, from the sales side of things to the marketing, um, even to the end users. My point with this is I'd love to have you join us the Specialized Packaging Alliance. Check out the link below to learn more. Thanks. Oh, I, I don't, you guys know that business better than I do. And again, this is not about me trying to sell you anything. What I will tell you is please keep an open mind because the 100% recyclable material is, is, it's pretty cutting edge. And it's very, very, what makes it unique is the fact that it's not, there's not chemicals in there. There's not anything in there. If you knew this, the materials that now, like a polyethylene or, or something that's married to this that gives you the barrier properties that you need, but it's also very, very clean in the fact that it, there's not going to have a whole lot of reaction. But I'll leave that up to you guys when we get to that point as far as I don't know how we go about testing that, but we certainly can get some samples in your hands, have you fill. Um, do whatever you whatever you want to do to to kind of get to that point. But I, I, I to me, it's one of those things you're going to have to kind of you know you guys know your honey better than I do. Yeah, yeah. My my thing is just had to be where you could take it and majority of it could be recycled because that's more of a that's more of the. Well, I really like what you're saying. I think it'll be important for us to educate our consumers. We already have to do that about the honey anyway because. Yeah. Uh, crystallizes. Yeah. It doesn't look like what you're yeah. getting in a yeah. beer. Our, yeah. We have pretty savvy consumers. So I think mm -hmm. just showing them that we've considered it, it, we took it into our thought process and we're doing this on purpose yeah. and intentionally. And then like you said, yeah. use the QR code or something that lets them know that this is an intentional choice on our part. Really, that's what they want. And that's what we want. And well, then, and... and the other cool thing, guys, is this is 100% curbside recyclable. This isn't gather it up and take it back to a store. This that's is awesome. curbside recyclable, which is, that's the one thing that we see a lot of, a lot of companies are not putting this together right now. I'm talking the big boys. They are talking a great game, but they're not putting their money where their mouth is. And the fact that if you want to help the environment, 
fancy materials and biodegradable and compostable stuff, look, I sell it. I'm, I'm all in. You want it? I'll, I'll be glad to create it for you. However, that has a lot of chemicals in there that have not been proven that have been 100% environmentally friendly, if you ask me. That's my take. However, 100% recyclable material is by far the best way to help the environment right now. The problem in our U.S., and I know you guys can relate to this, is my town has different recycling rules than your town does. And the town over has different recycling rules. That's, that's a problem. And one of the things that I try to do on my podcast and radio show and videos is really try to push people to push their politicians. You can't criticize recycling if you don't do it. You can't criticize and say recycling won't work. We don't have full-scale recycling yet. And I really want to encourage the government or private equity or people to invest time and money because recycling does work. We just have to do it. And the one thing that I often share, and I think you guys can relate to this, is 89% of litter in the U.S., 89% is intentional. That doesn't mean people walk away just saying, hey, I just want to make a mess. It means our children have not been taught, throw it away. Throwing it out the window or get it to the right receptacle that, that is meant to be recycled. Or if you don't know, throw it away. Don't throw it out the window. And those are the kind of things that I think eventually people are going to react to because I truly believe in recycling and I truly believe in 100% recycling if, in fact, we can do that. In the countries that recycling works, like Norway and Denmark that recycle like 98% of their plastic, it's because everybody does it. And by the way, the government incentivizes it. We turn it back to the store, we give it a nickel or give you 10 cents. Whatever it is, is an order. You gather it up to get coupons at the store. Whatever it is, these are the things that I think ultimately will work in the U.S. if people commit to it. Sorry. No, I'm not here. That's... I mean, that plays to our company and what we yeah. believe in too. It sucks. I mean, I get the not everywhere. We used to recycle all our cardboard. Legitimately, we have to drive two hours now to try to recycle cardboard. Like, it's to the point and where pay. we don't, and pay like an over and amount of money to, to recycle. Which is crazy. Which is, which is, and, and you know what's really sad, guys? If you've never been to a landfill, that stuff goes in the landfill anyhow. And if you think that they're doing something with that, they are so overrun. There's been such misconception on paper, believing that it is, it's, it, there's so much of it, they bury it. They yeah. just bury it. And I, now, again, that's part of the problem is our rules and laws are all screwed up. I want to recycle. We should be able to recycle. But you can't tell me that Delta Airlines switching from a plastic cup to a paper cup is somehow going to save the world. The paper cup is coated with a wax coating so it can hold the hot liquid. Now that entire cup is not even recyclable. You can't, it has to go to the landfill. But yet there's all this misconception out there. And by the way, I am always open for suggestions about how I share this. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm doing this individually with us. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Because it drives me crazy. It drives me absolutely crazy. And I truly believe that even in my small way, just tell people the truth. Just, you know, don't tell me one's better than the other if you don't understand the facts. But I digress. <laughs> yeah, that's so. Society in no, I'm, is, I'm there, is, is there one flavor, guys? Is there? So where do we go from here? What's the next step? Do you want me to just you know, do you have multiple SKUs or just one? Multiple. So, like, yeah, now you can kind of tell me what information. I feel like I shared everything we have thought about to this point. <laughs> oh, outside of outside of a smaller size, too. So the other thing, we got this at a trade show. What we want, another thing that we want to do is like a, a single serve. So we don't like straws because they change honey. So we want something. Yeah. That's like a single serve, like one or two tablespoons worth of honey that we can do in a box of 30. It was like a half ounce. Yeah. Container. It's like a, it's like a half ounce container, essentially. Uh, half ounce wide. 
And so what we this is a thought we've had since we started the company almost nine years ago now, is to like have a pack of 30 and you would be a subscription box and people would get these little like squeeze packs to take one. And we've seen though, I've seen those, those little Yeah, I've, and I've looked at those before. Um, but yeah, something like that. Because we want my thing was filling the something that yeah. shit. Right. So like something so, like so what you do at what so what you do in that case, guys, in this it just it's a bad picture, but these come in with the bottoms open. So you would fill from the bottom and you would seal. It's okay. actually not as complicated as you think. This comes in already attached. So your customer just rips it off and sucks it out or pours it in their oatmeal or whatever they whatever they use it for. Yeah, in their coffee. That's their another coffee. concept oatmeal in their mouth yeah. and we'd like to eventually be able to do um like um uh, infusions where we're doing like a honey amino acid for athletes yeah. or you know honey electrolyte that's what, that's what tyler was mentioning yep yeah and, and, and there's a lot of there's a huge opportunity out there i really personally like so i like those for the maybe the subscription thing i don't but one of the other things for the for the athletic part, I like having a small one. And this one, they could be in the middle. So you would literally just open it, suck it out. And yeah. I think pricing that one's going to, this one is going to be more cost, cost effective than, than this. Um, well, not again, guys, what is, what's what's not, what's, what's, Hey, here's something we're looking at, you know, yeah. let us know what we can actually do. Oh, hundred percent, guys. And that, and and the other thing too is, do you want to work on just this this first project, or do you? It, it's fine with me, or do you want me to give you some estimates? Now, by the way, if you're showing me that spouted pouch in the center, there's a bottom gusset on that. Would you agree on that one, Tyler? Is there a yeah. bottom on that? Or is it just yeah? This one doesn't have. A oh no, gusset. gusset. This one doesn't have a gusset. Okay, so it's just flat. Okay, great. All right. Uh, well, he's, he's, he's it, feet flat. I uh, don't need a gusset yep. on because I don't plan on putting those. If they go on a shelf, they're going to go in a set in a of box. Packages. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll come into your flat just like the other one, too. So if you want me to to play around with pricing on those ones as well, just give me an idea of that size as well. Uh, I didn't weigh these out. I didn't weigh this out. What we're looking for is. Well, you know, then then you get it to me later. Not a big deal. There's it, it's, uh, it's fine. Cool. What I wanted to do was make sure I, I got you. I'm not super married to size on that one. That one's more based off of how much product, how much honey will actually go in there, which will be something that holds like one to two tablespoons. One to two tablespoons, which is like half an ounce of water, roundabout. Yeah, we can we can get more clarity on that for you. But I yeah so yeah, it's no problem. Uh, Let me ask you a question, guys. Uh, um, I've got your I've got your three inch by four and a half you know, by the and bottom I, gusset I of that. Um, I, I'm not tied to this size, so if it has to good. adjust, we're willing to look at what you you know. If the gusset's wider, or the yeah, gusset's we're we we're not tied to that. We're more tied to the yes yeah. the front shape than the the inside bottom. Well, I. I I get that, but 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 again, one of the things that's we're in this difficult spot is you know how your product's going to fill them there better than I do. So I don't have a whole lot of to go on. Okay. I mean, I can certainly price this out and quote this out. Yeah, just quote but it out. what I'm getting at is, sorry. Oh, just you can just just quote it out at that. Well, I think my mom's just saying is that we're not married to anything when it comes to the gusset. I think it's just. What I what I think is going to happen because our honey is very viscous because we don't heat it and we don't add anything to it and so what we might have to do I already was realizing is we might just have to open that gusset up kind of manually a little bit and to allow because the weight of the honey at least that much weight like four ounces doesn't seem to be expanding the gusset on the bottom when we fill it. Yeah, and that's a that's a really good point. So there's two things that that you brought up. Number one. Reopening that with like even having a, you know, before you insert your tube, almost have an air tube or something that blows that in, you know, just to pre-open that bottom gusset. Um, they're just something that it's got to be open and that'll feel better. 
And that's where a lot of people get mixed up is those bottom gussets don't open very well, especially on the narrow sizes. And small sizes like that, you almost have to help them open. Um, and that's one of those things that you have to kind of... It, now, if it was heavier product, if you were talking about, um, say, packaging road salt or packaging flour, there are different styles of bottom gussets that we could recommend that pre-open with the weight of the product. But your product is, is you're not at that point. So that, so that bottom gusset is what's known as a round bottom gusset. And I'll show you if you look at it. Oops, yeah, I'm no. sorry. So that's the round bottom gusset is, is this little smiley face in here. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's what allows that bag. When you marry all these corners yeah. and have that bottom gusset, that's what allows it to stand on a shelf. Okay. Um, that's something I can think about and we can look at it on our end. Uh, so yeah, let's just quote it out for this yeah. one. I like how this one looks at that size. And then uh, quotes on, if you want to do, give me a quote on those smaller ones where you tear it, fill up on the bottom and tear the top. Yeah. Um, and then something like like this little one here with the flat bottom. Um, just uh, I, even this size, let's see what this, this size is. That one's too big. All right, so let, let me make sure, guys, let me make sure I, I'm following you here. So this particular pouch right here that we were talking about, I can quote that, no problem, very simple. Um, what volume, what quantity per... I guess you could say per flavor, per skew, if you were guessing. Um, so are we talking about with printing on it, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. So we have um, everything. No, I wouldn't think we were gonna do everything. We're gonna just do three three skews right now. You wanna start with three? The Californians, the three best sellers. Well, here's another here's another suggestion. Because because it's going to come down to pricing. What a lot of companies do is it's one of those things of having you can have one main printed pouch, and then you can use a button label to say it's this version or that version or whatever it is to see how this is accepted. It's a it's an easier way to get down that road. Now we can explain, certainly custom print. Explain that again. So it's talking about like it's it's. Printed the same, just has everything's the printed except for where the name of the honey of uh, the varietal goes. Well, it can be whatever you want. For example, when you get to that, when you get to the point of custom printing, minimum runs generally in that spouted pouch range are at least a thousand pieces, fifteen hundred pieces on up. And know. the problem is, the problem is, is not a problem, but but if you don't have we can court it either way, but a lot of times it's cheaper when somebody goes, you know what? I could do three SKUs times a thousand pieces and pay X. Or I could do 3,000 pieces of one main print and we can see how the response is in the market and we can identify the flavors of money with a little button label, which also is a cost effective way to do it. So it builds your brand, gets you something, you know, that's not a bad idea to start that way either. It's just, it's just no one would like, um, so, uh, well, pricing would matter. I, uh, um, so yeah, the way our honey works, I don't know if you looked at our website, we have eight different varieties that we operate at this time. We have uh, a signature line, which is five varieties. And then we have a special reserve line, which is three. So I wouldn't do all eight off the top. I'm thinking of probably maximum of five varieties. So I wouldn't do the Summer Valley. No. Right. I wouldn't do the Summer Valley. Okay, I wouldn't we do won't the, do the Morro Bay. Won't do the Pozo. Yeah. So that's three down right there. That's five. But we're adding Southern California wildflower mix in the end of it. So it'd be, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere. We're, we're yeah, going to be. I would start with three. I like what you said. I would start with three. So then, are we going to do like three thousand each, or maybe ten thousand units? That's that's where I'm looking. I'm looking like, oh, guys, guys, you don't have to lock that. All I, yeah, all I wanted was to get a range. Yeah. All I wanted was to get an idea. So we can change at any time. So what I'll do is I'll take three versions times a thousand 
times 1,500 and 2,500 of each one. So you can see how that all lays out. Does that make sense? That'll work. It might be more than that. I think it's going to do really well. And like I plan, especially we did three, like I was off the top of my head, I was thinking 10,000. Um, yeah. And then honestly, tell me what the price is if we did 10,000 with the button label. We're, we're going to, Hunter, it's so, it, that's very simple, guys. And you'll get into this. One of the things I wanted you to take from this was that this is this is a process. This isn't an off the, and you guys know this, this isn't an off the shelf kind of solution. So I would rather you start slow and work your way into it. Now I can, I, I'll, you want a hundred thousand, I'll sell them to you. But the point is, is I know, I know, and I know that you guys want to work your way into this. So you will see nothing here at this point is going to break your back. We're not talking about $3 a piece. We're talking about, you know, in the neighborhood of 50 cents, 60 cents, something like that. So, so the long term of this is looking at, I would rather build a relationship with you long term where you come back over and over and over again than worried about selling it 10,000 pieces just to, to sell you something. And, and I think it's important. I really want you to take that because I say this respectfully nobody is going to retire from your order. Nobody. And I mean that. And that's okay. I would rather help you guys get into that point where you get your business where you want it to go and really feel comfortable with this than me worrying about whether I sell you 10,000 bags or 2,000. Okay, cool, cool. So yeah, we can start there then. Yeah, I just, I, I initially, yeah, we'll just start there. We'll start there and we can see where the prices yep. are and, um, we can start with just this one pouch for now, and then and then yeah. uh, you tear off if you can give me yep. a, those ones for the same quantities. Um, which like like yep. yeah, same quantities. Uh, I can see what those cost. Um, oh, sure. Which one? Are you, what are you talking, uh, Tyler? What are you, you're pointing at something on the screen. Sorry, the yeah, brown one. The brown ones here. Like if uh, could you give me a quote on those ones? Yeah, those ones right there. Um, something like that. Um, I'd like to see the price on those ones too, and Jumo. Yeah. But I would need, but I would need a, but and I would I'll need a you, size. I will tell you, I will, we will, afterwards we'll email you, um, a size. Um, do you want, do you want? Yeah. So what I can do is I'll figure out the size. Oh, I don't have a scale up here. So I'm going to go check this, check it on weight and I'll be able yeah, to. Yeah. It's very easy for me to do. We would like our, the, the small single serve pouch that we end up using and our, more larger size. larger size. I will. Yeah. I want to have as much continuity brand wise, um, and so that's you know that's just. But we'll, we can work on that with art also when we do the, the art. Well, and the other thing too, Sarah, is the same factory in this particular case is going to be running both. So and and when you get into the custom printed thing, just to put you at ease, and this so and again, we'll have a conversation with your designer or whatever it is. Nothing we do at this at this level is going to embarrass you. We're talking about, I mean, again, how we print is what's known as rotor de viewer. It's not digital printing because digital does not work with liquids and spotted pouches. Rotor de viewer, if if you like the quality of the Everly, that's yeah. rotor de viewer printing. You know, if that's the kind of print quality you can expect, and we can print up to ten colors, generally nine, but sometimes ten. So it'll give you a very good flavor. You will go from something that, you know, you will be very proud of how this how this comes out. But let me quote this for you first and get okay. you guys at least started that way. Okay. Fair? Yeah, and then I can email you, yeah, just for your information, we wanted to do a bigger one and a smaller one. And I can get you the sizes on the smaller one. Um, yeah, we'll get all that. But I think my questions so far have been answered. Yep. I don't think I have that. anything else. You know, we talked about what, you, what matters to Sarah the most Sarah the most important thing is do you feel any better now that we talked <laughs> I just need to eat some more honey <laughs> ah there you go there you go okay guys um hey any questions shoot me a note but thank you for doing this because I, I you helped a lot of people especially with this because it's important for people to understand the different steps and I would rather you guys have a warm and fuzzy that you don't have to buy big boatloads of quantity we want to help you get into this and grow your business. Awesome. Cool. Thank, Thank you, dude. Great.
Bye, everybody. Have a good rest of the day. Hi, everyone. It's David Baranek. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you want to see more, here's another video that you can check out, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.